Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I think today is the fourth lecture. So last week we started to see real algorithms, right? So uh, uh, last time I explained this, how it works, how to build it. So I think you know exactly how is it built and how is it designed. And if I give you like a homework or a small project to write your own DAS, I think you have enough information and how to do it, right? We just, we know the bigger block, and then we zoomed in to every single block and how it works, right? So, but I will not give you that. You don't have to do that, because it's already written, you could import it to your programs and use it. It's a good exercise, but we'll let you do different exercises, all right? Uh, today we'll continue the game, and we'll talk about another block, another block, uh, 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 encryption algorithm which is AES uh, first of all as we saw as we explained last time the algorithms generally if they are two words if they are two that we divide the word in two there is uh, Feistel and non Feistel anybody remembers the difference yes I think the non Feistel is only invertible it? it is only invertible elements and Feistel could be invertible, not invertible elements. So this is in Feistel, and AES is non Feistel, as we'll see. Okay? That means all the components are invertible. Okay? Uh, so Feistel, non Feistel, uh, and generally speaking, when we do the algorithms or the encryption algorithms, you have public cryptography and private cryptography, right? So, uh, or one key or two keys. All right. So, the the most common one, maybe you know, is the public in cryptography where we have one key. So, if you have a sender, for example, a sender and a receiver, and they need to send the data. So, they have, for the packet they send, they have to share the same key, for example. Okay. And the same key is used to encrypt the data and decrypt the data right so of course there is a big 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 no, topic in here big 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 topic here which is how to share the keys how keys are shared that's a key management that's a completely different topic we'll talk about it later okay but basically to be able to encrypt the data and send it from source to destination they have to agree on a key okay and they have to use the same Algorithms. They have to use same algorithms. Okay, Kirchhoff law. What does it say? Scott, you look at me. The one about uh, hide the key and not exactly. Not the exactly. Code. So everything is known to everybody except the key. That's the talent to hide the key. You have a strong key, and you hide the key. Okay, the algorithms are all known. This, you know it. AES, you know it. Any other RSA, you know it. RC4, you know it. All the algorithms, it's publicly available and known. There is no talent in hiding the algorithm. The talent is in hiding what? The, the, the keys, right? All right, what else? Uh, so, yeah, so this is one technique which is like uh, uh, I mean, like dividing the word. Okay, there is public cryptography. There's where one key uh, shared, and there is another technique where it's two keys. Okay, so one of the keys is private, and the other key is private, and the other is public. I'm not sure how to write P P U to say. Okay, and then here we have two keys. One is private, and the other one is okay public. Right, so. It's exactly like when you go to your to your bank. I mean, some of you maybe they have a deposit box in the bank. Okay, usually there's two keys, right? So the bank has a key and you have a key, right? So you cannot open it without the key of the bank and the bank operator cannot open it without your key. Let's say that you, you lose the key, what do they have to do? They have to destroy the lock, all right? Destroy the lock. All right, the same thing in here. Okay, so, I mean, there's different applications. We'll talk about it. So you could, if you encrypt with your public key, 
okay they have to use a private key to unlock it and if you encrypt with your private key they have to use a public key to uh, we'll talk about it what what is the difference and why this used okay so we spoke about Feistel non Feistel all right okay we spoke about public cryptography and private cryptography we spoke about also what block cipher and stream cipher so block cipher is like you, you put your data in a block block so let's say n and could be 128 for example and you encrypt it you get another cipher which is n equals 128 bits for example this we call the block so you encrypt the whole block altogether all right as opposed to the stream cipher so you, you encrypt bit by bit bit after bit or you could encrypt character after character or byte after byte stream okay stream all right and everything has its own application right so today we're gonna talk about this and triple this and two this is part of still use but part of the history why because uh, they found it's not very secure all right it's a small key I mean that this is how many how many bits of a key 56. 56 okay 56 bits and that's too short too small the least we need 128 and now it is 28 to 56 and even more all right so AES which we're going to explain today which is non five Bistel uh, uh, algorithm kind of kind of replaced uh, the this all right and that's for the block all right so let's delve in like we did last time we have a big box and has small boxes black boxes we're gonna go inside every box and see how it works how it's designed and then after that we'll check I was talking a lot and I start to review because I thought they started a projector with a warm up. Seems they could start the projector. Anyways, uh, so any questions you have? Alright. So today we're gonna talk about two things. We're gonna talk about the AES, how it exactly works, and then we'll talk about the modern cipher how it works. Okay? There's five modes, we call them modes of operation. We're gonna take a look now. How it exactly work and hopefully we'll finish early today uh, you know by 8 uh, 20 25 hopefully we'll finish all right so all right okay so uh, all right so advanced encryption uh, AES okay uh, all right so um, so the advanced encryption standard ES is a symmetric key block cipher. So it's a symmetric key first. That means how many keys we're gonna have? One, one shared key, one private key. It's, so it's a symmetric key, all right? And it's a block, block cipher. And it was published by National Institute of Standards, uh, NIST in 2001. All right. So little bit of the history, how it started. You know, usually the government or the nice to put the competition for a new for a new algorithm. People apply for it, and then you know it gets selected. That's exactly what happened. Make long story short, but <laughs> it, it 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 was created, I think, by three people. If I don't, uh, if I, I did not forget, and became available um, in, in December two thousand and one. The criteria defined by NIST for selecting ES says that it has to be secure, the security, the cost, and the implementation. And the cost in here that means also the cost of the implementation. How the cost? Like right? uh, it's like the, the computation cost. All right. So uh, security it has to be very secure. That means cryptanalysts don't have fun with it. Cost. What is the cost? Computational cost. All right. You don't want to have the sluggish algorithm that every time you need to encrypt a hard disk drive takes you forever and then the implementation okay you need implementation that you could do it in a software and in a hardware in a software and hardware okay most of the encryption happening in europe like bit lockers and all this happening is a hardware nowadays okay you keep 
the CPU alone, keep it alone, do whatever you want to do. For encryption, we have the chip, we have the hardware in your motherboard, okay, that is responsible for the encryption, all right? So, we agreed that it's what non Feistel, Feistel cipher, uh, that encrypts and decrypts a data block of a 20. So, what's the size of the data block? 20 gigs. Okay. And how many rounds it it use? There's three versions. There, remember how many rounds we have in this? 16. 15, right? So, in here you could have 10 rounds or 12 rounds or 15 rounds. Okay, we'll see the design. The key size depends on the number of the rounds. The minimum for 10 rounds is how much? 192. For 12, for 12 rounds, 256. No, for 10 rounds, I'm sorry, it's 128. And for 12 is 192. And for 14 rounds, it's 256. So the key could be 128 or 192 or 256. Which one is much secure? 256. The longer the key, always the much more uh, secure. All right. So here is here is the the general design of the ES encryption uh, cipher. All right. So always always you start with what? With your plain text, all right? We start with the plain text in here, and then it's gonna go inside the ES. All right. If you take at the right side of your figure in here, what do you have? you have the key expansion okay like we, we have in this we started from one key right 64 which had a priority bits we remove the part bits we have 56 bits and then from the 56 bits we generated how many keys for 15 right 14 or 15 14 all right 15 and each one is how many bits 48 remember this history from last week all right all right, same thing in here. In here we have the key, the major key, and we're gonna generate, it's 128 bits, okay? We're gonna generate 128 bit key, and how many of them gonna generate? 10 plus one, which is 11. 10 plus one, so we have 10 rounds, we're gonna generate one more. If we have like 12 rounds, then we're gonna generate 13. So number of rounds plus one, all right? So we start the first thing is with the pre, the first step is a pre, uh, uh, pre round transformation. Remember, we learned about two important boxes last week, S box and P box, right? What is this S box? Substitution. Substitution box. And P box? Permutation. Permutation, right? right? So we, we know exactly how, how it works, right? So we have a pre-round trans transformation. We'll take a look in deep in this box. Then it's gonna go to round one, up to round, and let's say 10. Okay, let's focus in the first first you know model, which has 10 rounds. All right. Okay, so how many keys are gonna have? 11. From K0 to KNR. What is NR? The number of the rounds. Okay, so just for your information, the, the, the key could be could be in here, the key could be 128 bit or 192 bit or 256 bits. All right? Depends on the number of the rounds, uh, rounds, I know the key size. 10 rounds, 128. 12 rounds, 192. 14 rounds, 256. Relationship between the number of rounds and the cipher key size. All right? We're going to go all the way in here. What we're going to have in here? 128 bit off. Cyber text. When it when it plain text, the output will be cipher text. Okay, similar size. Good so far. All right. And please stop me if you have a questions. Okay. All right. So let's let's cover some of the basic the basics. We are dealing with data, and the data is put together in a blocks, right? So what is the smallest unit of the data? Bit. Bit. All right. We don't deal with bits, okay? So the so so you have eight bits together. We will we'll make a byte. So the smallest block in this algorithm is byte, okay? Which has eight bits. All right, and we could arrange them in one row or one column. Let me go back to my station. Okay, you could arrange them. This so this is the byte, which has eight bits. You could put it in 
ara or in a column. All right. So if you have if you have four bytes, that will form what? A word. A word. So the word has how many bytes? How many bytes? Four. Four, four bytes. That means how many bits? Six bits. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. All right. And again, you could arrange them in row or in a column. All right. All right. So the main unit, the main unit of our data is a block. What is the size of the block? One twenty-eight. Remember the block. So it, if it's one twenty-eight bit, it means how many bytes? Sixteen bytes. Right. Right. Because sixteen times eight is. 128. It means how many words? 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. 16. 16 words. Okay? Just, okay? And this is important to look. So the block is 128 bits. It's 16 words. Alright? And quite often, the block, we make a state. We make a state. So how we make a state? We arrange it this way. Okay? So word zero, word one, word two, word three. Okay, so B zero, B one, B two. So the word one, we'll put it here. Word two, we'll put it here. Word three, we'll put it here. And word four, we'll put it here. Okay? But we shift, of course, because we always start counting from zero. So word zero goes in here. Word one goes here. Word two goes here. Word three goes here. Simple. All right? So. Our game in here is the block. That's the main component. Okay? W many times, when we try to play with it, we, we arrange it in differently in a set. That's exactly how it is set. And the same order. Okay? The same order. So, P, B, 15. It's not B, 0. We start from B, 0 until B, 15. Okay? B, 0, B, 1, B, 2, B, 3, B, 4, and so on and so forth. All right? Okay. All right. So now block to state and state to block. We already explained this. Okay. So exactly in here, as you see in here. So the block it has like sixteen words. Sixteen, 16 words. So the way you co convert it. Okay. It goes like look at it here. It goes down, then up, then down, then up like this. That means you see in here. Look at it here. B zero, B one, B two, B three then B4, B5 until the end. So you should have the algorithm to convert from block to a set and from set to block. Simple, right? All right, so as an example, so changing plain text to a state. So you have a text, for example, whatever the text, uh, AES uses a matrix. All right, so we have to have our block. What is the size of the block? 128 bit. If it's short, what we do? Padding. We do padding. So that's what happened in here. Okay, we padded ZZ, anything only now. And this is a conversion for the hexadecimal. All right? So this one, this line, what we call it? Block. Block, right? And to convert it to a set, what you do? So 0, 0. Okay, here. 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 4, 12, 12, 14, 14, and so on and so forth. Right? So I don't think you can get confused. You cannot, you can't get confused after this, right? Okay, how to convert and convert back. All right. So the structure of each round, how many rounds we have? 10. 10 rounds. Okay, we start from where? We start with what? With a block or a state. We start actually with a state. So we have the block. We convert it to a state. Do you know how to convert the block to state? Yes. 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 Speak up, wake up. It's yes. Okay? All right? So we start with a state. You start with a state. Okay? State of Connecticut. Right? So you start with a state, right? Okay? So, and from the state, you're going to go to the first box. What, what do you do with it? So, Substitute bytes. We'll take a look. We we'll delve deep inside. Then the output will be a different state. Then after that, you're gonna go to shift rows. We'll, we'll, we'll explain it. Then the output will be another state. Then what you have in here? Mix columns. Okay. 
Okay. So you, you see, in here, we start mixing with, with, with the bytes. How many bytes we have in each state? How many bytes? 16. 16. Four times. All right. All right. We start playing with them. Then after that, we play with the rows. Then after that, we play with the column rows. All right. Remember, what are the major two goals to achieve in cryptography? Diffusion and confusion. Diffusion and confusion. Okay. All right. Okay. So then after that we have. Okay. So far we just blended. All right. And because each block is invertible, we did not do much. Each block is invertible. Remember, it's non vital What is non vital We use invertible blocks. All right. So what comes at the end? What we we use the key. We use the key. Okay. The round key. And then again we're gonna get a state. So this is state, the output is state, we'll go where? Next round. To the next round. And we we'll repeat the process how many times? Ten, Ten times. Alright? So okay, so let's take a look. Deeper. So let's just start with the transformations. What is transformations? Okay. So to provide security to ES uses four types of transformations: substitution, permutation, mixing, and key adding. Four things. Okay? Substitution, permutation, mixing, and yeah. key adding. All right. So ES like this uses substitution. Okay, you know substitution, right? ES two, uh, two invertible transforms. So the first one is substitute bytes. Substitute bytes, right? If you remember in this, what did you sub did you substitute bits or bits or bytes? Mm -hmm. With bit substitution. Here we do byte substitution. Okay, so we take a byte to replace it with another byte, right? So the first transformation sub bytes is used as encryption sites. So to substitute a byte, we interpret the byte as a two hexadecimal digits, right? So the, how we write the hexadecimal, the byte. Okay, how we write the byte, right? So for example, zero one one zero, right? Uh, one 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 one. So what is this? F. What is this? Right? Okay, six F, right? So any 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 byte could be represented in two 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 digits, let's say, or two two characters. Okay? Right? So we divide it. So okay? Alright? And then we do the substitution. So basically, basically, okay, okay, so we we, for example, for the row, uh, for the for the row in here, for the row we take the first one, and for the column we set we take the second part, and there is a table. There is a table. We replace the value. Table design table. Who do, who who wrote this table? Not me. Not you. The people who designed it. So let's take a look at the table. Here is the table. Okay, that's the table. So the table goes. It goes from where? From zero to F, and from zero to F. So if I have six F in here, it should be substituted with what? Six F A A what? A eight. Right? A eight. Right? So there's a table. Okay. So this table is invertible. This table is invertible. Okay? If I go for A eight, let's try A eight. Should be a different table, okay? The, the inverse bit is a different table. It's in here, okay? That's the inverse, right? That's the inverse. So let's try a8. Where is a? So this is a. Six f here. That's eight. Okay. That's zero. What? Good. Am I good? Okay. All right. So, so that's easy. So the first step is byte substitution. Byte substitution, and it's and it's invertible. 
Okay, there is a table for substitution. So when we are encrypting, what we do? By substitution. When we are decrypting, what we do? Inverse by substitution. There's two tables and it's a, like, just a lookup, right? So this is an example, for example, in here. Uh, uh, figure 77 shows how a state is transformed using the sub bytes transformation. So the figure also shows that the inver in inverse sub bytes transformation creates the original one. Note that if the two bytes have the same value, their transformation is also the same. So if I have FF transformed to, transformed to something repeated in your data, it will be the same thing, right? Okay. So as you see, for example, in here, 04, when it was transformed, transformed twice to what? To F2 and F2. Why? Because the same table, right? The same table, all right? So that's what we do. Let's go back in here, okay? We start with a state. Where is the state? That's the state, right? The state has how many bytes? 16. Then we'll have a, a completely different bytes, another 16 bytes. Simple. All right? Moving on, okay. So a transformation using, okay. The nice thing about this also, this is could be, this operation could be done by table, which is easy to do it as a software, okay? And you could use it by hardware. And how we do do it, do it by hardware? By having the polynomial, right? Any polynomial you could present it with LFSR, right? And could that. So you could do it also as a hardware. So transformation is also defined that define the transformation algebra 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 algebraically using the GF uh, two to power eight. I'm sorry, two to power eight field with the reducible polynomial. This is the reducible polynomial. So if you have D, what is D? Is the matrix multiplied with the inverse, with X and the inverse and plus Y, it will be converted back and, and it could be in the inverse and reverse. Anyways, bottom line, you could do it a presentation by by a table or you could do it by a hard hardware. So sub bytes and inverse sub bytes and substitution bytes transformation are inverses to each other. All right? So that's how we do it in the hardware. How you do it in the hardware. Okay, that's how we created the table, actually. So how we created the tables, I'm not sure how can you see that. We start with a state, right? Right? State. So you take the byte. The yellow box in here is a byte. It's a byte, one of the bytes. So in here, it's a byte. You take it from, you take you take a byte from here. Any oops. So you take any byte in here. Okay, I'm not sure how to do it now. Okay, um, you take the byte. Okay. You do the inverse. What is inverse? Is the multiplicative inverse, and the byte to matrix. So so that's a byte to convert it to a matrix. Okay. There is, you know, um, an X matrix. This is the X matrix. That's what, okay. When you multiply them together, we give you the intermediate value, which is C. Then the C, you add it to another matrix called Y, okay, and then uh, makes to byte in here, and then this is the new value. So basically, that's how we create this operation. Shows you how they created that table. All right. All right. And the reverse operation in here. As you know, this is could be applied as a hardware. So let us show how the byte zero C is transformed to FE by um, substitution. So basically, is is we gonna apply this in here? I'm not sure if you can see it in the board. Check it in your tablet. All right. So the first of all the the OC okay um, 
the multiplication inverse of all C is, is B0, okay? And then it's represented like that, all right? Multiplying, multiplying it, okay, so let me go back. So we put it in here, as you see in here, this is the B, the inverse. And then you multiply it with a predetermined matrix, okay, which we know it has inverse. Uh, matrix in here, multiply it with a matrix, we're gonna get C. Where is C? Let's go back, this is C in here, right? Then after that, what we do, we have, we, uh, we XOR it, we XOR it, uh, with with the y which is in here, that's the y in here, uh, here, all right, and we're gonna get the value of d, all right, which is f e, which is the f e, right. So that's basically how that table is built. That's exactly how the table table is done, and you could reverse it, reverse the operation. Where is the reverse of the operation? Is in here, right? So if you start from 0, 0, zero uh, C0, you're going to end with what? With, uh, with if you start with FE, I'm sorry. If you start with FE, yeah. you start with FE, you're going to end with 0C. Uh, okay? What's so, Y? What? What's Y? Why is it uh, acting like a key here? Y is pre determined raw given by the algorithm. Oh. So what is a predetermined and the box in here is a predetermined. Right? By design. All right. So another transformation found is in, in around is shifting with uh, which permutes the the bytes. So shift rows. Now what we're gonna do, the state has bytes, we already played with them, already we changed them. What we're gonna do next? Shift the rows. So we take one row and shift the bytes. We take the second row and how many rows we have anyways? Four. Four. So we take the first row, do shifting. So the first row, how many shifts we have? For row zero, how many shifts we have? Zero. For row one, how many shifts we have? One. For row two, how many we have? Two. For three, how many shifts we have? Three. Okay? If you have an objection, don't talk to me. Talk to the person who designed it. That's how it is designed. It. Okay? All right? That's how it is. All right? So that's what you do. Okay? So the second, so we start to change all the bytes. Now we are shifting in the rows. All right? Okay. Then after that, what we have, like example in here, okay? So if you have, this is the starting, right? When you shift. So the first row, do you shift? No. no. The second row, how many times you shift? One. 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 So the F2 was shifted, okay, came in here. And the third row twice, and the third row, and the third row three times. So, okay? So we need an uh, enter byte transformation that changes the bits inside the byte based on the bits inside the neighboring bytes. We need to mix bytes to provide diffusion at the bits level. So that what is this? Mixing, mixing. We we'll start doing mixing now. Okay, so we we'll start byte switching, then row shifting. Now we do mixing, right? So how we mix, okay, the determined matrix that we multiply, so we have uh, a constant matrix, okay, and uh, so, so the idea here, before we explain this, you know, when you multiply a square matrix with a column, okay, what is the output will be? Column. Column, right? This, what did contribute to this column? Every element in the matrix, as you see in here. So for example, you have, this is in here. So X changed to a value here. How, ch how it changed? It was A times X, B times Y, plus C plus times whatever Z, plus D times D, all right? 
So the value in here is not linear with, with another value. It just a, it, 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 it's a result of multiple operations on the matrix, right? Okay. So that will increase the diffusion. You agree? You agree? Okay, we'll agree because it's like you know multiple operations to give you that. So so for example, who contributed to the new value of x? B and T and C and Z and B and Y and A and X. Eight elements contributed to the new value. Alright? So in here, for example, if you have uh, um, a matrix which is C and C inverse, okay, we always could use this technique in the round going encryption and then verse when we go when we go back. So that's what we do exactly. So we'll we'll take each column. Now if I mix it, we take each column. What do we do with each col column? Multiply it with a matrix. So now the values in the column completely different. Okay? And mixed. So basically we went through what? The bits. Okay? So changing one bit on the byte will give you a different value. Why? Because it's like multiple enemies contribute to it. Agree? Okay? Okay, so now we're mixing the columns. How we mix the columns? Mult multiply it with, with the matrix. Alright? We have a completely different value. So the mixed columns transformation operates at the column level. It transforms each column of the state to a new column, to a new column. And actually, the, the, the mixing is down to the bit level, right? Then, the inverse matrix is a very simple. What do you do? Multiply the column with the inverse. We go back, right? So the inverse matrix column transforms, transform, uh, tra transformation is basic, basically the same as the mixed columns transformation, okay? It's just multiply it with the inverse. So basically that's what we do in here in the mixed columns. This is the original. When you apply what the you apply it with uh, apply the mixed column will give you this. You apply the inverse will give you back that. So it's inversible. You are good to go. Okay. So far everything we done, we have done, is inversible. Okay? We do it one way going down, we do it the other way going up when we are decrypting, right? Now the first step is to add a round key, add the round key. So how we add the round key in here is a very simple addition. There is no talent whatsoever. So you take, you take each column from the columns, what you do to it? What's the size of the round key? 128. So basically, you put it in a set, and then you add. You add each each column. You know, column one with, with column zero with column zero, column one plus column two. But you add them. Add okay. or add or sort. It's add. It's add. All right. So you add. All right. Is there any 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 you know? Is there any any significance to add a column to column here? Not really. Where is the significance? How we generate the key and the round key, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Okay. So in here, in my opinion, it's just adding like you know column to column. Okay. The talent where is how you generated the round key. All right. And that's what we. It, it's a very complex operation to generate the round, round key. All right. So key, uh, and that's what they call it, key expansion. We start with 128 key, and we're going to have how many keys? How yeah, many? 11. 11. Plus one. 11. 11. 11. All right, thank you. So to create round keys for each round, ES uses a key expansion process. If the number of the rounds is N, then the key expansion round will give you N plus one, as simple as that. All right. So, how, how it works? Okay, 
So basically, bas basically, if, if, if you have okay, so okay, so um, so uh, the word. What is the size of the word? That's true. How many bits? Thirty-two. 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 Right. So each each key out of the eleven keys has how many words? Four. So so for the pre-round key, which is twenty-eight bit, has words zero, word one, word two, word three. All right. Round one is four, five, six, seven. Round th so if you add this of this one is twenty eight bit. Each one is going twenty eight bit, right? All right. So that means how many words you have to generate? Forty four. Because we have eleven keys, eleven round keys, right? Pl uh, and each one has how many words? Four. Eleven times four? Forty four. Forty four. All right. So we have to generate how many words now? 44. And each four will give you 128 bit, which is the key for the round. Simple? Simple? OK. Let's move on. So that's how we do. So we start always from the key, right? So the key, how many words is the key? 120 bit, uh, 28 bits. How many, how many, how many rounds? How many, how many bytes? 16. Okay, so basically we have 16. So we take the first four of your key and you make word zero. So word zero is a very simple. Just you take the first what? 32 bits. How about word one? Very simple. You take the next, 32 bits. How about word three? Simple. Take the next 32 bits. How about word four? Word, I'm sorry, three. Very simple, right? So the first four words are coming from where? From the key, right? The complex stick starts now. Now, how we create word seven, for example? It's coming from exploring the word above it with the board with the word to its left. So you XOR word three with word six, word three. You XOR word three with word six will give you what? Word seven. So you take the word above it and to left it, you XOR them together, you get the word. Simple? Right. How, okay, so three we know where it's coming from. How about six? How are we going to get word six? Two with five. By XORing the one above it and the one to that, it's left. By W3 uh, with word 3 and word 5. Right? How can I get word 5? Exhorting W1 with W4. Right? How about W4? Word 4. By exhorting the one top of it, which is word 0. And there is a temporary, okay, temporary T4 that we have to find somewhere. Okay, so basically the, f the word zero, four, eight, okay, these are resulting from exploring the word above it and T4, T8, T10, okay, that we have to find, that we have to find. Clear? So from this picture, we know everything except what? T. T's, how to get the T, all right? So how to get the T is a very simple, look in here. Okay, so what you do, you take the word I minus one. So, so for example, okay, uh, so so if I need to calculate a word or, or word four, for example, okay, word four, okay, what is the word? What is word I minus one? Four three. minus one means word three. Three. So you're gonna take word three. Then what are you going to do at? Rotate the word. Then, 
substitute, substitute the words exactly like the rules, and then after that you're gonna exhort it with what? With four. Exhort with what? Table, there is something in top field called, called uh, constant. There's a constant rotation. You have to find it, and that's what give, get me what the T, which goes in here. Okay, which goes in here. So that's how we cut. Okay. So again, we're trying to find out. We're, we're trying to find T four. T four. So it equals to what W four minus one, which is W three. You, you take W3, what are you going to do? Rotate the word, and then substitute the word, and then XR it with some value in here. You're going to take out the sub value. Okay? All right? So what is missing now from the whole picture in here? I think only this, right? That's the only thing is missing we have to find out, right? So basically, okay, depends in the, the value. The value of this is from this table. So depends on the route. So if it's, for example, okay, if you notice all zeros except the first two, it's a decimal. So for for round, round for example, if you are doing round four, you're gonna take this, okay, and substitute it here. So this round constant, round constant. Each round has a constant, right? You take it, okay, the bins in the round. So if we are doing round one in here, okay, this is round, for example, round one. So we have to take round one. What is round one in the table in here? It will be Z, this one, this one. Okay? All right? Okay? So basically, we will go in here. Now I think it's a very easy. So our goal is, is to just repeat. Okay, we have original key. The key is how how many words? Four plus four plus four plus four plus four. How many? Sixteen. From these sixteen, somehow we have to generate how many words? Forty-four. Okay, we'll take four for each round. We have 11 rounds, let's say 11 rounds. This is 44, all right? Every key is easy to generate except the one in the left, which is W4, 8, and 40, right? So we have to use this formula for that because we have to generate first the T, all right? How we generate the T? We take from the one before it, we do rotation and shift, we explore it with constant, constant round, round constant, they call it, and we generate it, okay? The key expansion routine can either use the above table when calculating the word, or use gf 28 field to calculate the leftmost part dynamically, as shown. So you could do it also, you know, in the hardware. This way you could do, do it in hard mode. Let's take a look at it here. Show how the key for each round are calculated, assuming that 128 bit cipher key. Uh, okay, so we have in here what we have an box. So this is the key. Uh, so that's the key. So what is the size of this key? 128 bits, you agree? Yes. Okay. Right away, tell me what is W0? The first four words from the key. What is the first four words? 24, 75, A2, B3. And that's word zero. Right away, tell me what is the second word? The next four. What is W1? The next four. What W2? The next four. 
W3, the next four. So the first four words are very easy, right? Now we start calculating. Okay. So tell me, tell me, what is the value of word seven? Six. You need to use what? G6. No, you need to use uh, uh, six. Okay, so you need so where is seven here, right? Where is seven here, right? So it's coming three, from six. where? Three. It's oring this six. with this. And D. The one above it and the one to left it, right? Okay. And this is how we calculate the T's and all of that. So very simple. Alright. What do you notice? Do you notice know just it's completely I'm sure you don't notice anything because you cannot see. Alright? But presume hopefully that you can see what's written in here. So you'll see it's completely what? Confused. Diffused and fused and all of that, right? So each round key in A E S depends on the previous round key. The dependency, however, is nonlinear because of the subword substitution for word transformation, the addition of the round constant also guarantee that there's no linearity. Take a look in here, uh, an example 7, 8. The two sets, so in here what you have in here, you have key one and key two, and only difference in one bit. The same key, same exact key. We just changed how many bits? One bit. So let's use it to encrypt one data, okay? So when you do the encryption of one data, so, you know, okay, generating the keys, not encrypting, generating the keys, look how, so the, so this is the rounds, okay, and this is a bit difference. So you see how many bit different? Just changing one bit in the key, okay? So in the round 10, okay, how many difference in the, how many bits are different? 52, 51, 44, okay? So changing one bit is completely change the key. It's completely change the key, okay? You have like 55 different, an average, let's say 50 bits are different, all right? And that shows that how good the algorithm was, okay? So, the concept of weak keys, as we discussed in this, in chapter 6, does not apply to AES. Assume that all bits in the cyber key are zeros. So we start with, with the data is all zeros, as you see here. You see round 1, round 2, round 3, okay? It's the, 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 the key is completely different. If you remember in this, when we tried with the data zero zero zero, so we had a pattern. We had a pattern with the key, right? Which make it which make it like a weak key. So in here we don't have that. Uh, key expansion algorithm for uh, 192 and 256 is the same thing. Is the same thing. All right. So that's exactly what we do in here, as you see in here. <coughs> so we have like, we have the key expansion box, the orange box in here, okay? And we have round one, round two, round until the last round, okay? There is a pre-process, pre, which is add round key in the first one. And uh, the last one is missing a step, which is mixed columns, okay? So there is an addition in here and there's missing uh, base column. And when you go reverse, everything in reverse. So for example, if you look at the block, take a look at block, it starts with what? With sub substitute by the shift by. These are reversed in here, okay? And these in here, they are reversed, because they reverse each other. You apply them in reverse. Okay? So real examples in here, <coughs> in this section, some examples for, okay, so the following shows <coughs> the uh, cyber text plus created from a plain text. 
So look at the first plain text, and you have the key, and you have the cipher text. Completely different. Completely different. And in here, you see the example how things keep changing. You start with the input state, the output state, the round key, until you go to the end in here. Okay, until you do that. It's completely different. Here shows the state entries in one round. In one round. So you start with the input state after the substitution byte, after the shift rows, after the mixing columns, and then after you apply the key. Alright? So there's complete data completely you can't relate things to the okay. This is another example. We started with a plain text zeros. And we have the cyber key and um, again, it's, it's like completely different. Like it doesn't matter what the plain text you use, it will completely diffuse it. Look in here, <coughs> look in here what we did. Plain text all zeros. Okay, plain text one. Plain text two, all zeros except we change one bit in here. So the two texts are identical. Are identical except one bit different. Okay, and we're using the same key. When you look at the cipher, it's completely different. Completely different. Using the same key for the data, <coughs> same data except one bit changes. So changing one bit, one bit either in the key or in the plain text, the result will be completely different. Of course there is, because you have to decrypt, right? So if you decrypt, if you if you use the key and you decrypt this, you're going to get this. Okay. If you decrypt this, you're going to get this, right? Okay. All right. The following shows the effect of using a cyber key in, in which all bits are zeros. Okay, so the cyber key all zeros. Okay. Of course, it's a crazy to use key like that. <coughs> also, that shows you a strength. Okay, it's completely different. Okay. So when you look at, if you analyze, uh, do analysis, uh, AES was designed after DAS. Most of the known attacks on DAS were already tested on AES. So everything was discovered in DAS. It is in ES. Okay. Brute force. You think it's easier or easier or more, much more difficult? Why? Longer key. So for, for brute force in 56, so you, you have how many options? 2 to the power 56. And here, how much you have? 2 to the power 128. So much more, right? So definitely. And you know, the size of the key is very important to find brute force. Always. Okay? Uh, statistical uh, attacks, numerous tests have failed. And, and for differential linear attacks, also no differential linear attacks found for this uh, algorithm. So it could be implemented in software and that's and hardware and firmware. And most of the laptops now become with encryption, you know, uh, technique and that will, will make it. Good. The algorithm used in AES are so simple that they can be easily implemented using cheap processors and minimum amount of and that's the end of the story gentlemen and women. Okay. so let's have a break and we'll come to talk about the the modern symmetric cyber keys. So let's uh, talk about the, the modern symmetric key ciphers. All right. So what we have seen before is like simplistic, right? The data that we transfer is not one block, right? There are many blocks. Right? I mean, if you uh, if you're encrypting your hard disk drive, it's like 
millions of blocks. If you're sending like uh, uh, five big files, it's many blocks. All right. So how how is it done? Okay. All right. So a symmetric key in cipher format can be done using modern block ciphers. Modes of operations have been devised to encipher text of any size flowing either DES or AES. Right, so what we do. So there's five modes we're gonna discuss tonight. Modes of operation. The first one is the ECB. First one is the ECB electronic uh, code uh, code book. The second one is, and this is the simplest one, it's a very simple one. Then we have the CPC, which is uh, cipher block chaining, how to chain the blocks together. You we'll see that. Then we have the cipher block or cipher feedback. Then we have output feedback. And then we have the CTR or the cap. Five. Five. All right? And again, what's the goal in here? Confusion. Hmm? Confusion, confusion. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> the goal is how we can send like many blocks. Okay? Blocks, how we chain them together. All right? Using the key, the same key. All right? All right, so the simplest mode of operation is called the electronic code book, ECB. Okay, so basically take a look at the figure down. Down there, let me go here, yeah, it's easier. All right, so in here what you have? Plain text, which is n bits. You have key, your encryption, n bits. You have cipher one. You keep repeating the process. So each one is independent, right? Each one is independent, right? Right? Okay, there is no chaining. All right. Is there a security and the reverse? And here the same thing. We have cipher one, decryption, same key, we give the plain text. Is there any problem with this? Is there any advantages or disadvantages? Let's have a discussion. Speed. Speed. Is it slow or fast? Slow. Fast, right? Independent. Okay. Uh, it's not uh, it's at the same time or like it has to finish no. this sequential. Sequential. Blocks after block. Okay. That's or in parallel. That's fine. It could be in parallel. There's no problem. If they are independent. It could be in parallel. So if I have like twenty blocks, I could encrypt them at the same time. There's no problem. Alright? Alright. So is there a security breach in here? Can you think of a security breach? Security problem. Missing blocks? Huh? Missing blocks? Missing blocks? Why there's missing blocks? Something happened. So let me tell you, if there is a block, one block called, or the block is I love Bridgeport in the beginning of the transmission. And there is another similar block called I love Bridgeport. What would be the output? Same. Okay. So if if a similar text encrypted or similar words encrypted okay and they give you the output do you think that like a hint for the crypto or no mm -hmm. yeah. all right right okay so i'll give you an example let's say that you know uh, end of the month mm -hmm. there is a report uh, report of your salary to the bank to pay you right right so that's how we get paid right we don't go to the checks anymore like you see the the deposit comes to our hour, right? So somebody gets the message, everything is encrypted. But for a reason, he could know where is the section that tells about the deposit amount. And he just gets cut salary, the encrypted data, and take my pay stop and change it to his salary. His salary like five, 20 millions a month, and my salary like $500, right? Is it good or bad? Bad, bad right? Good for me, but it's bad for security, right? All right? 
So, so it's very simple. Okay, you could have like parallel encryption. Each one does not depend on the other one. So, but this is not the way to do it. That's not the way to do it. It's a very simplistic. Okay. All right. And and the other thing is a very simple why. Why you call it book? Why they call it book? What, what, what's the name again of the book? Uh, code book. All right. So code book. So if the key is, let's say the key 128, 128 bits. So how many possible keys you could have? Two to one for me. All right. And if the block is n. So how many possible for the for the data? And so could you create a block for each of these keys with all the possible possible data? Or fifty percent or forty percent, right? Right? And then you could look for this pattern in the you understand what I'm talking about? Maybe not. If you have the word equal n and the key is k, right? So what are the possible options? Two to four k and two to four k. So I could create a book, okay, for the first key, key whatever, key hundred, and it could put like all the possible text and the cipher using that key, right? I don't have to do it all, but like certain certain texts, the common texts that you use them in, right? Okay? And when, let's say I, I grab, like, I grab a message. So I could look for the patterns in the message that matches certain of the patterns in here. I will be able, able to know that text, all right? Of course, you're not going to do it manually, you could write a code for it. You could write a code. Okay? What if, for example, the key, you know, the key, let's say they could narrow down the key. Let's say the key is 128 bit, for example, equals 128 bit, right? What for for a reason that you know handling of this key? So you could narrow it to how much? To 128 minus 100, narrow it down to like 2 to power 28, okay? All right, so that's the work of a cryptanalysis. I mean, we try to look through statistical analysis, you know, doing different things, narrow things down, but you could create an electronic book. This key, this is all the possible combinations. You don't have to do all the possible. You're looking for the patterns of data. So you encrypt the text that you're looking for, okay? So for example, let's go to the example of the salary Scott. So Scott like salary let's say not five million, let's say hundred thousand dollars a year, right? Alright. So I encrypted with this key, I'll have like a pattern in here. Okay? Better than this, salary, the word salary. Or deposit, for example, deposit. I encrypted, okay, using you know keys, okay, and then we'll generate a pattern, right? So I look for this pattern here. Then when I know, when I see this pattern there, that means it's the word is what? Salary. Okay, or deposit. And then after that, what we'll have? The amount, for example. And so on and so forth. We could play all the games. Bottom line, having single key, one key for all the data encryption is a problem. It's not a good thing to have. Clear? All right. So, um, I can, okay, it can be proved that each plain text block at Alice's site is exactly recovered at Bob's site because encryption. So basically, it's just reverse each other, right? Anyways. All right, how about the error propagation? If there is an error in a transmitting, Okay, transmitting. For example, there's error in this block. Okay, does error propagate? No. It's, a, it's like independent work, right? So, 
you have a plain text one, you encrypt it, C1, you send it, the data get corrupted. Has nothing to do with other packets. Right? Has nothing to do. So if there's no error propagation. Right? Alright, so uh, so uh, a single bit error in the transmission can create error in several in the corresponding block, in the block itself. However, the error does not have any effect on the, the other blocks. Right? You agree? Okay. All right. So, how about stealing? Okay. All right. What is stealing? What cyber text is stealing? All right. Like you have multiple blocks: block one, block two, block three, block four, block five. Right? Okay. So if you have the last last block is short, what you usually you do? Bad, right? But actually, batting is not a good idea. It's not a good idea because usually. If you do uh, stream encryption, so you're reading and writing right away, it has to be the same size. So badly you are changing what the size. So there's another technique, it's called stealing. Stealing, right? So basically, you know, you have, for example, block here, block one, block two, block. N minus one. Okay, and N, block N. So this is one, two, all right? One, two, okay, okay. All right, let's say the size in here, 128. 128, 128, 120. All right, so typically bad thing, you're gonna make it what? Okay, we wanna keep it the same size. So what you use, a technique called stealing. And here, what you do, so for example, so the plain text n minus one, which is n minus one there, okay, you encrypt it, okay, all right? So that's the cipher n, that's the cipher n. You take the x, which is the encryption, and you send the head, n bits head of it only. And when you go to the plain text n, you tail it with the, the difference, like in our example there is like, what do they say here? Eight bits short, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, eight bits short, okay. All right, and so basically, basically bottom line, I'm going to say, I, 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 sent, I sent these two, the last two um, blocks changed of the same size. And I use these two formulas. Okay? I use these two formulas. So Definitely the M is less or equal than N. The last one, okay, it's less, right? It's less than. So basically what we are doing in here, okay, the packet which is PN minus one, PN minus one, the PN minus one, how many bits we have? N, all right? about the P and how many bits it has? M. And the difference in here, what they call it? N minus M. All right? In our examples, N equals, for example, 128. So this uh, M will be eight, will be 120, I'm sorry, 120. And this is 128 minus 120, which equals how much? 8. This will be 8 
and this is 120. So what we do, okay, <coughs> so we take x, what is x a value? Okay, what is x equals to, we're going to encrypt, right? Encrypt using the key for what? We're going to encrypt the p n minus 1, which is this before the last one. Okay? So what is what is the size of x? 128 bits, right? Mm -hmm. Right? This is, how much is this? 128. You encrypt it, we're going to give you 128 bits in our example, right? Okay? So I take the head m size of x. So the x in here, I take the m, the, fir the first the first m bits, which is in our case how much? 20 bits. I save it where? And cm. Then you understand. So this is 128 bits, 128 bits. Then I take the 120 bit, okay, the head of it. Okay, the head of it 120 bit. Okay. I create another play y equals p n. Where is p n? The last one, right? Which is how much is p n? 120. right? Okay. I tear it with what? Tail n minus m for x. So in here, in here, I did not send the whole x. I sent only. 120 bits. How many is remaining? Eight, which is in here. Eight. And in here, 120. Right? Okay. And then the CN minus one that I'm going to send, it will be encryption for the Y. Y, how many bits? 120. Okay. So I stole, I mean, what I did basically, I mean, if you, uh, I mean, take a picture of this, you read it, whatever you want to do. So basically, I did not pad. I did not pad. I took the last eight bits from the previous, and I consider it like it's part also of the file. So in here, it has one twenty-eight bit, right? I took the last eight bits. I consider it also repeated here and in here, and then I did the encryption. So good. I feel I'm speaking in French. You know, the similar ones in creating a storage. What? Now the last eight bits are similar to the previous uh, last eight. Okay, so similar words in the previous example uh, may cause an issue. So this also can cause an issue, right? What issue it can cause? So basically, I, I have to get eight bits to here. And instead of creating a dummy eight bits, Okay, I got them from where? From the encrypted data of the 128. So I encrypted this, it's gonna give me 28. I took the 8 bits, I added them in here. Aren't the encryption switched for the last two? Switch, yeah, I think I do. They were switched, yes. Yeah. So the idea here is not to not to get dummy bits because anyways. Alright. So in CPC, there's another technique, CPC. This is a more realistic one. In CPC mode, each plain text block is exclusive or when the previous cybertext block before being encrypted. So this explain. So you have in here plain text, right? All right, so let's take a look at it in plain text. Before we do the encryption, I look at the cipher from the previous encryption, okay, the, 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 yeah, the encryption of the, the, the cipher here, and I explore it with the B, and then I do the encryption again. So I have to know, basically, I have to know the encryption of the previous block to be able to block this block. error propagation but the problem what's the advantage in here 
that if you have repeated input, it will not be. So if you have here, I love Bridgewood, and here I love Bridgewood, that it will be completely different. All right. So, all right. So in here, I have to before I do the encryption, the same key, all that. I have to get the output of the previous stage, explored with the input, encrypted, and then I have C2. I keep doing that. Now, where is the problem? The problem with the first one because I don't have anything. So always I have to set to 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 share the initial value, which is initial value or vector. Okay, it has to be shared. All right. So where is the problem in here? The, I mean, what is the advantage that you know we cannot have repeated ciphers, even for the same plain text? And it's changed. The problem is error will propagate. Error will propagate. All right. And the most disadvantage that I cannot, I cannot like, I cannot like send things in parallel. It has to be in sequence. So for example, if I'm trying to access data in let's say that that's how I encrypted the database. And I need I need to get a certain record, certain record. Okay? And it's saved in the database. If they say I want to get this record from the database, to be able to get this record, what I have to do? I have from the very beginning decrypt, 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 and then I get there and do the decryption. But it's safe, it's secure, right? Right. But like in this case, like, like um, instead of like decrypting one thing, you will be decrypting like all, like more, like you wanna decrypt more data, but you're gonna end up dec decrypting more data. Sure. I mean, to be shared. Which is yes. not advantage. Security, more secure. The encryption will be much more secure. Mm -hmm. So it's much more work for crypto to encrypt the data. Why? Because to decrypt this, to decrypt this, you have to decrypt the one before. And to decrypt this, you have to decrypt the one before. Which is not secure. What? Which is not secure. Which is much more secure. I mean, Which for, much that, more for that. So if you get, for example, if you get just portion of the transmitted data, not the whole data, okay, you try to decrypt it. So you can't decrypt it unless you know the whole data before. Yeah, for that data, it's yeah, I mean it's much more secure. Think about it; it's much more secure. At least so that was the book saying. <laughs> okay, so it can be proved that each plaintix block at Alice's side is recovered exactly as box side because encryption and decryption are inverse of each other. I've seen. So, one issue is with the initial vector. The initialization vector should be known by the sender and the receiver. That's another complication. That's another complication. So you not only need to share the key, you have to share also the IV. How about the error propagation? The CPC mode, a single bit error in the cybertext block, CJ, uh, C, for example, J, during the transmission make yet error in most bits in the plain text block BJ during that decryption. The same thing, we don't have to do first we don't have to do padding, we do stealing whenever we need to uh, uh, you know uh, beef up the last block. Whenever we need to beef up the last block we do uh, uh, the bit steal. Then we come to the third mode, which is the CFP, CFP or Cipher Feedback mode. All right. Um, in some situation, we need to use DES or ESC to secure ciphers, but the plain text or cipher text block size are not as very small. It could be a character or a bit. So from the next three, three modes, it's kind of if it's kind of a stream. It's like a not a big block. Stream. So, for example, in here, as you see, so how you do it, okay, so you have, first of all, so you have R bits. It could be 1 bit, it could be 8 bits, like a character, right? That's your, that's, that's your play text, okay? You XOR it with the key, with the key, and you get what? The cipher, right? The cipher data, right? Okay. All right, all right. So, 
Okay, so how it's happening, how it's happening, how we're gonna generate the key. So the key basically you have a state which is n bits, all right? Shift register actually, it's a shift register, okay? And before, I mean, it started with, with, with IV initialization vector, all right? And in the first time you don't have to shift it. That's the, the initial value, okay, you have to shift it. So, and then you have to encrypt it with the key it will give you n bits also, but you know, it, 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 this is, could be one of 28 bit. But what I'm trying to encrypt, for example, a byte, which is 8 bits. So I take the first 8 bits, okay, I, as a key, I XOR it with 8 bits, byte, with a byte, it will give me a byte, right? Now for the next stage, what I have to do with the IV, if I keep it the same, then it will be the same key, right? I did not do anything. So what I do? Shift. Okay, how, how, how can I know how, how many times I have to shift? Who tells me how many times I have to shift? The, the output of the? The output of the? First cipher. So if the output is four, for example, how many times I have to shift? Four. Then I have a new IV in here. I continue, all right? So what is the advantage in here? I don't have to encrypt the whole block. I could break bit. I could encrypt bit by bit, or byte by byte, or word by word, or a whole block by a whole block. So the T could be the whole block if it's like okay, or any size. Okay, it could be any size. All right. What is the other advantage? That the key or the, the, the value is chained, and the key, you know, we don't. If I have initial value, for example. If the, if the first, the first thing, uh, the, the first uh, plain text is, is letter A, and they have a letter A in here, so the output would be different. Well, I'm sorry. For the encryption, uh, we don't use the plain text. We don't encrypt the plain text. Then. There's a plain text in here. We we do we, we XOR the plain text. So in here we don't we don't encrypt the plain text. What are encrypting? The IV, okay, but I exploring it with with them. Okay. All right. So in CFP mode, in cipherment and decipherment, use the encryption function uh, for the whole process. So that's exactly what will happen, cipher feedback mode in a stream cipher. So it's used for stream ciphers, as you see in here. Okay, you start, you know, uh, the shift register, you start with IV and encryption, the data key going until, you know, and the decryption. Mode. Then we come to the output feedback, is the same thing, the same thing, okay, so what's the problem in here? Take a look in here. in here. What's the problem in here? That you are taking what? You're taking the key in here and you, I mean the output in here, and you're taking it to, um, for, for the, to, to decide how many shifts you have. In the, the OFP, all right, um, in each mode, um, uh, each bit in the cyber text is independent of the previous bit error. To avoid error propagation, so in here, uh, in what we are doing is So in here, in the previous one, which one we use to determine the shifts? So it's the C1, the CI. Now we don't wait for the CI, we use what? We use the key. 
the previous key. We use the previous key. All right. So, in the previous one, we have to know the C1 to be able to decrypt or to be able to encrypt. To, to be able to encrypt C2, we have to know C1, right? To be able to uh, encrypt C3, we have to know C2, chain. And here we don't have to wait for that because what we are using? The key. Okay, we're using the, the key. The last one is the counter, the counter mode. Uh, there is no feedback at all. So we use a pseudo ra uh, the pseudo randomness in the key stream is achieved using a counter. So basically, in here you start with IV, initialization vector, the key encrypted. That's what generate the key, key one, key two, okay? Okay, so we start with M based as a plain text, explored with the key. Alright. Alright. So the IV starts with a value, then it's a counter. Increases, increments. So let's say the IV initially five. Then for the next one will be six. For the next one, seven. And all of that, right? That's like a counter, increments. Okay? It's not calculated by a register shift, for example. Okay, it's like a counter. Okay? So the counter is encrypted for each block. Is encrypted for each block. Okay, so these are the ones we have explained. The first one is ECB. Okay, so the first one in here, the ECB. Each inbit block is encrypted independently with the, with the same cipher key. It's used for a block cipher and the data unit size is here, right? The second one, it's the same ECB, but each block is first exclusive earned with the previous cipher key, there's a chain in here. It's a block cipher, and the block is in. The next three, the next three are stream ciphers, stream. You could do bit by bit, or byte by byte, or any size, okay? On the run, you could do it, right? Okay, so these are stream ciphers, and the size of the data could be R, which is less than N or equal to N. Same thing. The last one is again a block. It's like a block. It has to be a block. All right. So basically, basically we are used, we, we were talking about block cipher. Let's take, talk quickly about two algorithms for uh, for stream ciphers. Stream ciphers. Okay. So for example. Stream ciphers, for example, uh, the RC4, which is not secure anymore, and uh, A5, which is used in GSM. All right. So of all the five modes in operations enables the use of the block ciphers for encipherment of a message or file in a large units and small units. So you have your large units, small units. Sometimes pure stream are needed for encrypting small units. Of data such as character objects. We need to see the character objects. So examples of the RC4 and the A51. A51 is used in the GSM. Okay, and RC4 um, it's a byte oriented, byte oriented. So you encrypt byte after byte, byte after byte. Okay, stream cipher in which a byte a bits um, plain text exclusive ors with a byte of the key. So the key is a byte, the data is a byte, the output is a byte. P is a byte, key is a byte, and C is a byte, right? All right? So that's RC4, okay? So basically, you know, um, you, you have um, a state, um, which is a state which is ranges from 0 to 255. That means 256 bytes, 256 bytes. And this will explain it all, if I can explain it. So, so basically the way it, it happens, okay, the, the first two steps in here happens once, all right? The first thing, we have the key, you have the states, okay, which is, so, so the key is like 128, uh, 
250, whatever, 256 uh, um, uh, byte, okay? And that's the key in here. From the key, the input key, gonna create, how many, how many keys gonna create? 256 keys, right? So if, so the first key for the first byte, the second key for the next byte, right? Okay, so from the key, you're gonna generate 256 bytes, right? So you mix the key, and anyways, you're gonna generate 255, 256 keys, right? And the process is very simple. So we have, for example, a byte in here, right? That's a byte, right? Which is eight bits. You have to encrypt it with the key. What is the size of the key? Eight bits, all right? And you're gonna give you the cipher, right? Where are you gonna get the key? The key, where are you gonna get it? from this box in here, which is the state permutation key. So basically you start with the key, this box will generate 256 different keys. Each key is, how? what's the size of each key is? One byte. So for the first one byte, it will give you one key. For the second one byte, it will give you the second key. Okay, all right? All right, so it's like, it's like, like receiving the data, it will encrypt it byte after byte. For each byte, you're gonna need one key, and the key is it uh, is eight bits, one byte. It's it given from to you from this box, from this operation. Okay. So example, for example, to show the randomness of stream key, we use a secret key with all bytes set to zero. So the secret key. The initial key is zero. The key stream for 20 values of key is this will give you this. Will give you this. So from the initial key to encrypt the first part, give you up what is the key will be. 222. So for the second second byte to encrypt it will be 24, and so on and so forth. So it's a completely run. Uh, so it says repeat example 85. Uh, but let the secret key be five bytes. Okay, so that's a secret key. Okay, 1502, uh, 202, 33, 6, 8. The key stream, it will be completely different than before. Again, the randomness of the key stream. All right, so that's RC4. RC, uh, is RC4 secure anymore? No, no. RC4 is not secure anymore. Probably. The A51, that's the GSM, we're using GSM, okay. Um, you know, um, so basically it's a very simple idea, it's, it's a very simple. So the plane takes a frame, and GSM, the, sim, and the GSM uses frames, all right? What is the size of the frame? What's the size of the frame? 288. 288. Why 288? Two twenty-eight. Two twenty-eight. Why two twenty-eight? It's not our our business. <laughs> you said <laughs> decided to put in the frame size. All right, that's how it is. Okay. All right. So, so two twenty-eight bit. All right. So I need the key stream of two twenty-eight and the output two twenty-eight. Very simple. So in here, what we have in here. When you have a key stream generator, okay, we're gonna generate bit out of bit, okay, until we have 228 and do that encryption. So it's secret key, we start with 64 bits. So the secret key starts 64, 64 bits, the secret key, it will generate bits out of bits. How many bits? 228, that will be the key. All right. So I think the green box is clear for us, the blue box, the white box. The only thing we need to study a little bit is the yellow box, right? You agree? Mm -hmm. So there is no, no magic in here, right? So generate bit out of bit, okay? Until we have 228, then it will, okay? Okay? Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, the frame size is 20, 28. Okay. 
228. So usually you try to. And that's GSM. Okay. Okay. So basically, basically, how many, how many, uh, what is the secret key? So what you see in here, what you're seeing in here, what you have in here, by the way, what you can see in here. Left shift, register, right? Okay, right? LFSR. You remember we studied, we studied that in chapter five? All right? How you create them from polynomial, right? All right. So basically, what is the size of the size of the key? 64, right? What's the size of the key? 64 bit. All right. So from the 64 bit, I, I design how many? I design three LFSRs. The first one has 19 bits, so this is 19 bits. The second one is 22 bits. And the third one, how much? 23 bits. Okay? Okay? The L, LFSR, it has a seed. So the seed is coming from where? From the secret key. So the first 19 bits, it will be the seed for the first one. And the, the next 22 bits will be the seed for this one. And the next one will be the seed for, for this one, right? Okay? So if you add 19 plus 22 plus 23, how much? 64. These are the bits, right? And that's, that's, that's the, the, the uh, three LFSR, right? If you forgot how we designed this, go back to chapter 5, right? So what will happen? How we generate? I mean, the idea we're going to generate a bit every tick, a bit every tick, right? So, what will happen? Okay, it's gonna calculate. It's gonna, it gonna calculate, and then we do the shift. So every time I take, what we're gonna get a bit in here, and a bit in here, and a bit in here. It will be at x or and will give you what? One bit. So this this box is what? In this yellow box. So what was the input? 64 bit. What we have inside it? Three LSFR, right? Okay, and what's the output? One bit. Okay, every tick will give you one bit. So that's exactly what we have. This graph is what is inside that yellow box. All right. So at the point of time, the clocking bit are uh, one zero one zero one. What 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 we are talking about? That means the output of here is one. Here is zero and one. So they are XOR together. How much would be the output? One. One. Right. So it would be one. Okay. Anyways. So it will get a Everything will generate well, but it will be used and uh, used. Okay. So what is what is remaining in this discussion is the key management and key generation, right? So we said that Alice and Bob, you and I, source and destination, they need to share a secret key between themselves, right? A secret key between themselves. And they have to communicate it. So, uh, so basically, this is like a major, major problem because if we have, for example, in here, if we are here like ten people, okay, so we need to share keys. So I need to share key with him. He needs to share the key with Scott. Scott needs to share the key with me. Uh, okay. So how many keys are we gonna need? How many? N times N minus one. Right. 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 So if okay, so if we are ten people, it will be ten. It's gonna be nine. N minus one. N times n minus one, right? Right. And she calls how much? Ninety. Nine. Actually, we have to divide it by two. Why? Because the key between me and him is the same. Right. It's the same key, so we have to divide by two. So we need. Okay. So we need to get. How about if we have a billion people in the whole world? 
all right? So definitely, you know, personal sharing keys and all. How many people like you and I know that we need to we communicate with, right? So there is a whole system we're gonna talk about, key management uh, to be discussed, discussed in chapter 15. So let's delay discussion about this later, okay? But, you know, I promise you there's solutions for that, okay? Then the key generation, so that's key management. The key generation, um, you need keys of different sizes. So the selection of the key must be based on a systematic approach to avoid a security leak. The keys need to be chosen randomly. You have to show, to, okay, I mean, usually the keys, these keys, 28 bit and 256, you think that you and I are gonna set and pick, it's not a password not the password, it will be generated by a system. So to increase security, to increase security, these keys must be what? Very random. Too tremendously random. Okay, okay, random. All right? And uh, so random number generators are discussed, you know, in, you know, in different topics, so you could take a look at that. So how we can generate a completely random. So, so first of all, we have to take care about uh, randomness of the key generators. There are systems generate the keys and it has to be completely random. And after that, all of these keys need to be put somewhere, need to be shared, you need to have management, need to be managed, right, for communication. You know, uh, as we move with this book, you know, basically, you know, you'll be a scholar, a scholar in, uh, in the So the next, the next to this, uh, we're gonna start in, in part two, we're gonna talk about asymmetric key. So we were talking about symmetric. So the sender and the receiver have the same key. Same keys. Now we're gonna talk about symmetric. Okay, so we'll start as usual with math. We're we'll gonna cover some math next class. And then after that, we're gonna talk about asymmetric key cryptography. So there's many of them. The RSA, Robin, Aljama, ECC, all of these you have like you know, um, uh, public and private keys, and you know, very interesting algorithms that we cannot cover. And then after that, all right, we're gonna go to part three, and we're gonna talk about important topics. We're gonna talk about integ integrity. What's integrity? The data did not get altered. How we can, you know, integral, integrity. Remember uh, C CIA? CIA, CIA, whatever you call it, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? Availability, right? And then we're going to talk about authentication. Authentication. And we're going to talk about, you know, um, uh, uh, key management. So in chapter 11, we'll talk about message integrity and message authentication. How can, how make sure that the message is not altered and it's authentic. It's authentic. So you could receive a message from me, okay? And it's and it's from me, you know it's from me, and it says that your grade is A. It's something typical, somebody has changed, all right? Or you could receive a message from me, I tell you there's no class next week, and it's definitely coming from me, all right? But it's not integral, has somebody, so how we can have the integrity of the, the Okay, then after that, we'll talk about very important topic, which, which is digital signature, digital signature. So now, when you have a contract, what do you do? Sign it in the paper, right? That's analog signature. That's your handwritten signature. Now, every day is by digital signature. Why I need to have a digital signature? I need to know the sender, right? Not repudiation, right? So how is digital signature is done? Okay, that's in chapter 13. Then again, after that, we're gonna jump to chapter 14. We're gonna talk about entity authentication. What is entity authentication? And biometrics, like how to think, you know, authenticate accounts and all of that. Then, after that, we're gonna talk about in 15. Remember what is in chapter 15? Key management. Key management. And that's a very, you're gonna talk about the key, uh, key DC and all of this is a very important thing. Then after that, we'll jump to what? 
to network security. The name of this course. What's the name of this course? Network security, right? Network security. In December. Huh? In December. <laughs> Network security. And the funny thing, and this is a very important. You see, this is, I mean, I don't know who called this course Network Security. It's not me. I'm teaching the course. All right? All right? So, but, you know, in the Network Security, I mean, when you talk about network, what comes to your mind first? Firewall. <laughs> the OSI reference model. Physical. Right? All right. Very interesting. And this is the chapter, the most interesting chapters in the network security. So we start about security. The security is applied in the last three layers, in the application layer. Right? All of us use it. Okay, like PGP and uh, S MIME and all of that. This is in which in, in level seven. Then you go to to after that we're gonna talk about the security where in the transport layer, right? So can you give me an example that every day we use it? SSL <coughs> and TSL, uh, TLS, right? So we're gonna learn that. So we have security at the application level. And then we have security at the transport level, okay? And then the last thing, which level we have security, right? The network layer that, you know, we have, did you hear about IP security, IPsec, all right? So security at the network layer like IPsec, all right? So interesting, I mean, which one, I mean, do we always have the three levels or? Only the network, okay, or only the transport, or three or two of them. What is the combination, okay? So basically, basically, seriously, you know, once we finish the last chapter, I mean, you will feel that you really understand security, okay? Because you, you you have the basics of encryption, okay? You have the basics of the math, big math, then. You'll go all about all the so the Kia, you know how you, you you use encryption for confidentiality, how you use encryption for integrity, and how you use it for availability. And then you learn about authentication and authorization, and then you learn about the application level, transport level, and the network level. So uh, I think you'll be you'll be happy at the end of the semester. You'll you will be tired, but but you'll. You know. And then we need to start a cer uh, 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 a certain point in the other book about uh, cybersecurity analysts, okay? And uh, that would be fun also. That still you do a lot of work there, okay? As a group, as a group you do work there. All right. So I think you know we have a good plan. Is my time up yet? Yeah. <laughs> 30. All right. Thank you so much, Professor.